You're watching the news on Bahrain International. I'm Hamid Shaban. Good evening. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received today a number of officials where he noted the need to unify the views of concerned parties in order to develop any sector. He affirmed the government's keenness to follow up on the projects that directly affect the life of citizens, particularly those that develop a provided service, to ensure the best livelihood for the citizens. His Royal Highness emphasized that providing the best services in a safe and secure environment is a top priority for the government. He reviewed with the attendees the Kingdom's approach regarding regional and international cooperation, affirming that the country's balanced policy and achievements in every field have earned international recognition and respect evident in other countries' supporting stances towards Bahrain. The Prime Minister welcomed other countries' interests in developing their economic cooperation with the Kingdom in line with their political cooperation, which also witnessed continuous growth and development. His Rohanis added that the world is now aware of the challenges and terrorist threats that face Bahrain and countries now support the Kingdom's efforts in maintaining its security and stability. Regarding Arab affairs, the Premier called for enhancing Arab cooperation in investment fields, noting its positive effect on the development of the region's countries and people. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today at Libya Palace the Secretary General of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Oman Sayyid Badr bin Hamad bin Hamoud Al Bsaidi. His Royal Highness hailed the Bahraini Omani relations and the advanced level of cooperation which reflect the deep rooted relations between the two brotherly countries. He affirmed Bahrain's keenness to develop bilateral cooperation and broaden the horizons of cooperation in various fields based on the two countries' strong historic ties. The Premier hailed the development of the Sultanate of Oman under the leadership of His Majesty Sultan. Qabuz bin Said. During the meeting, a number of topics regarding cooperation between the two countries were discussed. For his part, the Secretary General of the Foreign Affairs Ministry of Oman hailed the role of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister in developing bilateral relations as well as his contributions in enhancing the Gulf Cooperation March. The representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Works and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa received in the presence of the Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, President of the Bahrain Athletics Association, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness Prince Hamza bin Al Hussein, who is visiting the country to attend the Formula One Gulf Air Grand Prix. His Highness Sheikh Nasser welcomed his guests, hailing the deep-rooted brotherly relations between Bahrain and Jordan. He noted the keenness of the two countries' leaderships to enhance and develop relations to achieve the aspirations of their people. Sheikh Nasser affirmed the importance of enhancing bilateral relations in all fields, particularly youth and sports. For his part, Prince Al Hussein commended the achievements of the kingdom at all levels. He wished the country further progress and prosperity. He praised the development of the kingdom, affirming the importance of the Formula One Grand Prix, which reinforced its status as a hub for the motor sports in the Middle East.
The Speaker of the Shura Council, Ali Saleh, chaired today the weekly meeting where the Council approved a decree by law regarding Bahrain Central Bank and financial institutions and approved two proposals by law regarding unified family law and the Code of Conduct. The Council approved a report regarding double taxation agreement with Morocco. The Council then discussed the report of the Shura delegation participation in the second session of the Arab Parliament Speakers Conference in Cairo and another report on the participation of the Council's delegations in the Arab Parliament Committee meeting and the fourth meeting of the first session of the second legislature legislative term also in Cairo. His Highness the Emir of Kuwait, Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabra Al Sabah, received in the presence of His Highness the Crown Prince of Kuwait, Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jabra Al Sabah, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, who is currently on an official visit to the friendly state of Kuwait. The Minister of Foreign Affairs conveyed the greetings of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and those of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander, and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to the Emir of Kuwait, wishing him good health and happiness to the the people of Kuwait. His Highness the Emir of Kuwait welcomed the Minister of Foreign Affairs, praising the historically deep-rooted fraternal relations between Bahrain and Kuwait, hailing their joint cooperation in various fields to achieve common goals and aspirations. He also praised the continuous interaction and solid relations between the two countries and entrusted the Minister of Foreign Affairs to convey his greetings to the leadership of Bahrain, wishing the country constant progress and prosperity. Sheikh Khalid affirmed that the high interest accorded by His Majesty the King and His Highness the Emir of Kuwait to the solid historical relations linking both friendly countries represent a catalyst for further cooperation at all levels, expressing sincere thanks to Kuwait for its supportive stances towards Bahrain at all circumstances. The Prime Minister of Kuwait, Sheikh Jabir Al Mbarak Al Hamad Al Sabah, received today the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, was currently on an official visit. His Highness Sheikh Jabir welcomed the Minister of Foreign Affairs, praising the continuous communication and brotherly relations between the two countries, as well as the constant progress and growth of all aspects of bilateral cooperation. The Minister of Foreign Affairs conveyed the greetings of the wise leadership and best wishes for good health and happiness to the Kuwaiti Premier and further prosperity and progress to the people of Kuwait expressing the Kingdom of Bahrain's pride in its close historical relations with the state of Kuwait. He also stressed that continued interaction and consultation between the two brotherly countries have pushed for broader horizons of coordination and joint action to benefit both countries and people. During the meeting, the Minister of Foreign Affairs briefed the Prime Minister of Kuwait on the progress of the Kuwaiti-Bahraini Joint Supreme Cooperation Committee and on the agreed memoranda of understanding and executive programs. His Highness Sheikh Jabir stressed the importance of following up the work of the committee to which the Prime Minister offers all support to help it achieve its objectives in promoting bilateral relations at all levels. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, met today with Sheikh Nasser al Mohammed Al Ahmed Al Sabah, who welcomed his visit to Kuwait and asked him to convey his greetings to the wise leadership, wishing Bahrain further development and prosperity. The Foreign Affairs Minister also conveyed the greetings of the wise leadership to Sheikh Nasser Al Sabah. Sheikh Khalid expressed pride in Bahrain's deep-rooted brotherly relations with Kuwait, highlighting the efforts of Sheikh Nasser Al Sabah to serve Kuwait and Arab and Islamic nations. Sheikh Khalid also expressed thanks to Sheikh Nasser's continuous interest in. Bahrain, wishing him abundant health and happiness. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, delivered a speech during the ninth session of the Kuwaiti Bahraini Joint Supreme Committee Cooperation Meeting, which was held today in Kuwait. He praised the bilateral, deep rooted, and historic relations and the level of cooperation reached by both countries thanks to the brotherly ties between His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Highness the Emir of Kuwait, Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabar Al Sabah, which are based on common goals and joint actions that achieve the aspirations of both countries and people and maintain stability and prosperity. The foreign minister pointed out that recent political and economic challenges facing the region and stressed the need to further enhance the bilateral relations and strengthen joint cooperation in order to achieve political, economic, social and cultural goals and protect the gains made by the countries. He praised the cooperation of the Bahraini Supreme Council for Women, led by Her Royal Highness, wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, and the Women Affairs Committee led Sheikh Latifa Al Fahad Al Salim Al Sabah. He invited all public and private institutions of Kuwait to participate in the Sabika Global Award for Women Empowerment, hailing the role of Kuwaiti women thanks to the support of the wise leadership of Kuwait. Kuwait's first Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister Sheikh Sabah Khalid Al Hamid Al Sabah delivered a speech in which he stressed the need to strengthen cooperation in order to overcome all challenges. 
He affirmed Kuwait's firm stances towards the Kingdom of Bahrain. The two sides signed three MOUs in the fields of parliamentary cooperation, electricity and traditional central markets cooperation. They also signed three programs in the field of education, culture and environment. The Minister of Education and Chairman of the Higher Education Council, Majid Naimi, headed today the Council's 41st regular meeting, where a number of topics related to the development of performance of higher education and its academic programs were discussed. The Council discussed a draft list of scientific research that aims to develop research performance and facilities in higher education institutions and establishing regulations and standards for it. The Council reviewed the list of proposals for the sports establishment and facilities in higher education institutions. The Council also reviewed the report of the Secretary General of the Higher Education Council in universities and the extent of their commitment to the regulations and decisions governing the higher education affairs in the Secretariat and made decisions against universities that violated these regulations. The decisions included notifying the violating universities and giving them a one-month notice to mend the violations or stop the registration of new students. Excitement continues to run high and the Bahrain Marshals team continue to ensure the success of the biggest event of the year. These few hundred people who moonlight as Bahrain's F1 Marshals are what make the difference between a good race and a great race. More on this report with Yasmin Abrahi. For a successful Grand Prix to be pulled off at the Bahrain International Circuit, it's not just the traffic and crowd management that's essential. Almost 1,000 race marshals will be working around the clock to ensure the success of the biggest occasion on the country's calendar, from the pits and the paddock to trackside. We continuously have training uh, during the hundreds of events at the Bahrain International Circuit, uh, whether it is for the senior marshals or for new marshals where they shadow our existing marshals. We have a lot of classroom training. We have a lot of on-the-job training. Uh, we do leadership training. We do time management, crisis management, uh, stress management training, and so on. So the training cycle is continuous. This year we have about uh, 1,155 marshals out of which 970 are males and 185 are females. We have uh, a lot of females who are in uh, leadership positions who uh, have been with us for a very long time and who are also trainers, you know, so uh, it's something that we are very proud of. The team go through several training courses from the run-up to the showpiece event to ensure things run smoothly and that it secures and enhances the safety of all those involved, including participants, officials, spectators and the public. Every year, whenever we cover an event, we, we are getting more trained and more expert in that. It gives you success that you feel that you have done your part, you have covered all the, all the medical aspects, whether either on track or for the spectator side. So covering such a major, major event, which is a major mass gathering event in the Kingdom of Bahrain, always makes us as medical team uh, proud to be part of this success story. Prior to the international races, we go and find the gaps required for our training. Uh, such as a new marshals requirement, uh, refreshment courses requirement, and that covers the entire spectrum of, of training uh, subjects that we provide from uh, marshalling and from other skills such as leadership, uh, team management and so. We do meetings, so it takes several months of preparation, so we do meetings in the beginning. Anyone who's not been able to give that time commitment is not there uh, for the F1 to make sure that we don't have any amateur mistakes because our standards as Bahraini marshals is known all over the world. We've been uh, running races in India and in Azerbaijan last year and this year hopefully in Abu Dhabi as well. The Bahrain Marshals team are made up of both men and women who enjoy being part of motorsport and this year will be assisted by volunteers from abroad, each of which will play an integral role in making sure the Formula One passes without a glitch. It is because of the efficiency of the Bahrain Marshals team, the team is able to put in what is required to live up to the standards to make sure Bahrain is shown in the best possible way. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Yasmin Ibrahim. The Ministry of Youth and Sports Affairs held a press conference to unveil the details of the 9th International Youth Convention from the 22nd to the 27th of April. The convention aims to introduce young people to the goals of sustainable development of the United Nations, promoting a culture of giving and encouraging the youth to revitalizing their country's economies. The conference will attract international expertise and active personalities in various fields. It will also provide an opportunity for the participating delegations from around the world to strengthen communication, creativity and cooperation among themselves. 
The press conference reflected the nature of the partnership between the Ministry of Youth and Sports Affairs and Temkin Foundation, which aims to pave the way for the Bahraini youth to participate in the development process of the... A very good evening. You're watching the business news on Bahrain International with me, Mohammed Youssef. Bahrain All Share Index closed at 1,344.69 points, marking a decrease of 11.53 points below last closing. The decrease was in the commercial banks and investment sectors, and investors traded mainly in the commercial banks with 69% of total shares. 78 transactions included 2,080,883 shares, worth 449,289 Bahraini dinars. The second deputy chairman of Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Abdel Hamid Al Kohaji, received a business delegation from the Philippines, headed by the Under Secretary of the Philippines Department of Trade and Industry, Ruth Castello. The meeting discussed enhancing bilateral business, stimulating partnership and investment opportunities, which underlined promising sectors such as ICT, construction, tourism, energy, health, and medical services. The meeting also discussed business and investment climate and privileges to foreign investors.